yeah. round. How you feeling going into this fight? Feeling good. I'm excited. It's um, it's another championship that I'm looking to you know put on the trophy case and. Obviously, it's a great opponent. His only losses this year to, were to me, and he had two great finishes against really good guys on the other fights that he had this season. So, I mean, he's, we're both going to make adjustments from the last times that we fought, so it's probably not going to be the same fight that either of us had had in the past. What was your initial reaction when you heard about your opponent change? Was it uh, so Um. Well, we, we found out a while back just because once we found out about the drug test results and stuff from the other guy, so um, I've known for a long time, they just weren't able to announce it for a while. And, um, you know, I felt that he's worthy because his only losses were to me, and he went out there and finished his other guys that he fought, like I said before. So, um, I mean, it was just to, you know, get back to the drawing board and, it's, it's not hard to get motivated to fight the same guy you've already fought because you know you're going to get a little bit of a different version from the last time. Do you feel like it was an easier adjustment to get ready for him since you fought him twice as opposed to having to fight Pineda and being the best Um, I don't know. For me, I feel like it's easier to fight a guy you haven't fought because the unknown, it's, it's the unknown that you train for. And uh, to fight a guy that you've already fought, especially if a guy that you fought twice in the last six months is... Um, you put more pressure on yourself to make the right adjustments. So I feel like I'm a little bit more motivated to go out there and try and get a finish and try and fit, put this trilogy to rest uh, instead of you know just going out to beat a guy that I've never fought before. Especially as if you as a fighter to be able to have control of your own destiny like the PFL has been promoting. It's, it's great for me. I feel that um, coming from a wrestling background, that's that's your entire career is being in a tournament structure or being in a structure of winning and moving on. You win and move forward. There's no politics to it. Um, you have to earn your spot and earn your way, and that's how my entire sports career has been since I was a little kid. You told me like a week or so ago that you were in negotiations with the PFL. Are those still ongoing? Um, we're uh, everything is done, and I'll be back for 2020. So and I'm excited. Are you happy with that? I mean, you talk to me about you know UFC being in Ohio, you know UFC being a big old competition. Is this a very lucrative, happy deal for you? Yeah, it's definitely uh, it's a deal that I'm happy with staying with PFL for, and they've taken care of me the whole time that I've been here. It was just. You know, kind of the negotiations and things, that's that's how business goes and you got to kind of take your time with it and not rush into it. So I'm excited for that, but I'll still be in Columbus for the UFC event to support Cody Garbrandt. And we talked a little bit, um, I'm going to be a part of MMA trivia, you know, three fights in seven months, uh, you know, maybe be the guy that beats someone three times in seven months. I mean, is that like a fun aspect of this thing that, you know, you remember the time to kick me? three fights in seven months, it's the same dude. I don't know. I feel like I feel like just PFL schedule in general is something to tell the kids about. Five fights in seven months. I mean, just winning five fights in one year is crazy. You guys hold on a second. Yes, sir. Thanks. Sorry. Thank you. I don't know why their boss didn't tell them to do that. But. Last year, how did you prepare for this fight? What took to prepare for this fight? Um. I've, I've been training all year long, so this is just another opportunity to show my skills. And going into this fight is like the other fights this year. There's not really anything different except there's a belt on the line. And I feel that I've, I've prepared for this situation multiple times. And just to, to try and go for my fourth title is something that I'm really looking forward to. Any, any special mental preparation exercises that you do every day? Um, I've been mentally tough since I was a little kid so I really don't know what I do it's probably subconscious at this point but I feel that when I when I need to dig deep and and look for something to build the mental toughness I it's in there I feel like it's helped me improve every fight. I've, I've brought new things out each fight, as I will this fight. And it's the things that I've been working since, you know, March and April and May and June that will start to show now. So I'm really excited to, to bring those things into this third fight. And that's why I feel like I'm going to have even a better fight this time with Gilpin than I've had the past two. Are you going to be in the same weight class next year, or are you going up, or has that not been um, I haven't really thought about that yet, but I think I think the idea of like a, a cool super fight, like 
between myself and Natan or somebody at a different weight class, I think that would be a cool idea too. Instead of the champions always going through the regular season again, maybe doing like super fights with past champions um, during those regular season events. Uh, but obviously with the regular season format, you have to win and build points. But I feel like uh, winning to be a two-time champ, if, if you are a two-time champ, maybe working on a super fight deal, that's something that may be more interesting for PFL going into the next season. Would that also but, be a positive, also facing new opponents that you haven't fought before, because staying in the same weight division likely can will face maybe one, two, or maybe all, yeah. so all same guys again. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they brought so many new guys in this year, and now I'm fighting the same guy for the third time. So <laughs> obviously, he's a worthy guy that they brought in, because I've been in front of him three times, or will be in front of him three times. So um, it is like, they, every year they try and bring more people in to like the signing of Rory McDonald and other guys at the weight class and um, so it's exciting to see but yeah I think uh, you know if it gets to that point I hope not I hope there's you know great competition that comes in and kind of starts to replace the originals in a way just so we get new fights. So um, yesterday was a uh, signing this year for your division Nice. I don't. I honestly don't know much about him, but I'm focused on my guy right now. So. Talk about introducing not only yourself but the world of mixed martial arts to a New York crowd. You know, I know New York has always admired mixed martial arts from a distance, but now you guys get to bring the fights to a place like Madison Square Garden. So how special is that for you? It really is special. Last year in 2018, I fought two of my fights in the first season at Madison Square Garden Hulu Theater. And this year, finishing the season here, it's always cool because it's a culmination of everything together in the, you know, one of the best cities in the world to do it at. So um, it's definitely exciting and it's um, it's an experience. Like you, you experience the city, you experience the fights. It's it's more than just coming to a fight. You experience all of New York and obviously it's New Year's Eve. Man, you talk to me about that. You know, the frustration with the whole Pineda thing. The, the, the hearing happens on the 18th. It gets just gets pushed back to next month. This is even more frustrating. Like, it was just a big waste of time. You could have known about Gilpin like two months ago then? Yeah, I felt like it was a waste of time, but it was part of the due process that had to be done, I, I guess. And um, I had a feeling it would just get yeah. drawn out. So, I mean, I don't even know what they're trying to appeal with it. Like, there's going to be a suspension no matter what. And I don't know. What are you going to do? Like, dragging it out's... I don't know. I felt like it just, it was handled a little, and I think that was from the commission too. I don't even know if that had to do with PFL or not. So You talked about in wrestling that you fought you know, people multiple times in a short amount of time. Considering your wrestling history and going into this, having beaten Alex twice fairly definitively, do, do you think it has like given you a huge mental edge going into it? Because how could he overcome the fact that you've already beaten him dominantly twice? You had even a loss in the PFL in two years. Do you think you going into this fight with as big a dominant edge, almost a Mike Tyson aura because of the history you guys have? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like my mentality, I try to keep a humble mentality. Like it's the first time fighting the guy. So regardless of how many times I've fought or beat somebody, you have to go into that one with a unique mindset that this is the first time you fought. They're going to bring something different. I'm going to bring something different. And there's always going to be adjustments made in between. I mean, there's there were times where I wrestled the same guy twice in the same tournament over a one or two day period. And you get two completely different matches because you make those adjustments on the fly. And so when you have 10 weeks to make an adjustment, there's definitely going to be some little differences. but. I'm obviously confident in it, but I don't go into it. Like, I know how tough the guy is. I know what he's done to the other opponents. I know what it, I know what his track record's like. So he's not a guy to overlook by any means, and I'm excited for a third fight.